This is Twit. We are tracking what's going on with the iOS 26 beta. Uh, as you know, Apple recently had its Worldwide Developers Conference at which it introduced new software across the entire suite and announced a new numbering system that uh, has to do with the coming year. So like a car model, the coming year. So iPad OS 26, iOS 26, et cetera. And we are currently in the developer beta stage. This is pre uh, public beta, which is supposed to start sometime in July. And the second version of iOS 26, the beta was released and Mac rumors among others uh, has posted a little guide for things that have changed thus far. So Rosemary, tell us a little bit about what um, has changed because the, the reason why I think for people who are listening, we take the time to talk about this is because it kind of gives you an idea first and foremost of what is within the realm of possibility for changes in a beta. So from the time that you see something to the time that it's actually released in probably September, October, here are some of the things that Apple might change. I think it gives insight into that, but it also specifically gives insight into when you get into the uh, public beta, if you're not doing this developer beta, things that you might comment on that you come across that are worth changing that may actually have an impact on the future of the uh, platform. Yeah. So one of the things that's changed, I'm really pleased about, Control Center is now not as transparent as it was. Um, so this is Control Center on my iPhone for those of you looking at the video. And um, I can see that there are things behind the Control Center I can no longer read the contents of the widget. Um, and this is something that previously I could definitely like read things through the control center, which had its benefits, I will absolutely grant, but it was also quite distracting. And I ended up like opening control center and then closing control center a number of times over the last couple of weeks uh, with the, the first round of the beta, because I would get distracted and forget what it was that I'd open control center for. Now, 90% of that is my brain. I will guarantee it. However, it's also nice that they have just toned down the transparency. It's still glass. It's just frosted glass, like the kind that you put in a bathroom window so that people can't see in and just see you wandering around. Um, and uh, related to this, uh, they've also uh, enhanced the effect of the reduced transparency option in these accessibility settings um, so that uh, you don't basically really have transparency much at all, uh, which is really nice. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just finding that that is quite beneficial. I've also made a tweak in Safari. Uh, so this is uh, my Safari. Um, and I have already made a change thanks to Simon Stovering, the creator of Scriptable and many other great apps uh, who posted on Mastodon, uh, that he has put the tab bar at the bottom uh, with the, the, the buttons at the bottom, which is good because I, I was really frustrated with new safari and i wasn't sure why i couldn't put my finger on it it turned out the buttons were just in the wrong place for me um but uh the the the, the tab things are now at the bottom uh which is just yeah much more like ios 18 it's not as big of a change um and uh the bigger thing however is in the app store there's now an accessibility section for product pages Mm. Um, so um, this means the developers will be able to, I believe they are not yet able to, but developers will be able to uh, specify what accessibility features they support within the app, which is going to be a really great uh, thing for all users uh, because, you know, just because you are not necessarily the target market for accessibility features does not mean that you might not benefit from them. Um, you know, people who are colorblind aren't often considered to have major accessibility needs. However, they would still probably appreciate the differentiate without color setting that is available in the accessibility settings of iOS. Uh, and seeing that an app offers that, where instead of it maybe just being that you have boxes which are gray and then colored when they're checked, there's also a little tick mark below the ones that are colored so that it's really easy to tell when there's a checked. Um, and yeah, I, I personally think that that's really lovely. 
Um, wallets, parcel tracking, getting way more powerful where you can track um, uh, anything. So you can enable Siri to scan mail to find all orders and emails from merchants, even if those weren't made with Apple Pay. Um, so now it's going to be able to track way more. There's a new ringtone. There's a new radio widget. Low power mode got a better description and live captions for phone call transcripts. Um, the transcribe uh, calls option is now called save call transcripts. And that feature makes it clear that it's going to inform everybody on the call with a sound before transcribing begins. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think that these are all pretty great changes and it's really interesting to see what is coming so that we can, you know, see see what the future will hold for us because we are getting a look inside the crystal ball at this point in time hey if you liked that clip well there's so much more to get by joining club twit you can watch all of ios today where we cover all things ios tvos home pod os watch os and so much more it's all the apps all the tips and tricks and everything with rosemary orchard and me micah Sargent. join club twit at twit.tv club twit to see all of ios today